Hey, I'm Jared, and we're back to Texture Our Alien. Okay, so with this project, I was in somewhat of an interesting space. And what I mean by that was that the concept for this character was actually just initially a 2D black and white sketch. So what that ultimately means is that I was on my own to figure out how I wanted this texture to look on this character. Obviously, there's a plethora of Xenomorph models out there that have already been made, ranging from movies to games to fan art. And shoot, this model had already even been textured when I had handed it off to Marco in a collaboration. That being said, I had a ton of examples to pick and choose from. Even though that was the case, I did want to try and separate mine from what was already out there. So that led me to my first order of business, which was going to be to grab some reference to get things started. When first coming up with ideas of what I wanted this character to look like, I was really drawn to a lot of inspiration from sea life. So here, if you look at my pure ref board, you can see I had a lot of inspiration from different types of fish and mostly deep sea fish. One of the really interesting aspects that I felt like was kind of key to what I was seeing in a lot of these deep sea fish was this idea of semi-translucency. So that was something that I really wanted to try and incorporate when texturing and rendering this character. I did know that that was going to be one of the most difficult aspects for me to try and capture with this character. I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to go about it, but that was a battle for a little bit later in the process. Okay, so at this point I have some reference, now let's go ahead and jump over to Substance Painter and get texturing. Like all of my characters, I start by establishing the base colors of what's going to exist underneath my main layer of skin. With this character, there's a lot of bone that's really close to the surface, so I wanted to make sure to accentuate all of those areas with a passive yellow. I also throw a little bit of a splash of yellow across the model, not as heavy as the areas that have the bony landmarks, but just all of the areas that feel like they might have a little bit of fat or just some coloration to add a little bit of variety. I also throw some blues and purples into the kind of recessed areas where there might be a little bit more blood pooling and blood flow in those areas. One thing that really differed with this character from some of my other ones is the fact that I knew that I wanted the skin to be very thin. So a lot of the information that I was actually painting was going to exist underneath the main layer of skin was going to be kind of shining and poking through a little bit more heavily than say just a normal person with skin. Now after establishing my base colors, the next thing that I move on to is going to be painting my main skin tone. This is just going to be a large, broad coverage across the skin, and like I said, I want the information that I painted underneath to still come through, so to do that, I made sure that I used a light brush and just kind of gave a quick coating to the model. Now, as I stated before, one of the really tricky things with this model is I didn't necessarily have a blueprint. I wanted to try a lot of different ideas and see what I could accomplish, but with that ultimately came a lot of back and forth. With this piece specifically, I really struggled in a lot of aspects to get something that I liked. I was trying to add different color combinations, and I think a lot of what was giving me a hard time was just the overall base skin color. So since I tried to do that, it seemed like every color that I was laying on top became very prominent and visible and was kind of overwhelming the textures underneath it but I ultimately trusted the process and approached this in the same way that I would with human skin. I just kept layering on color variation until I got something that ultimately kind of led me in the right direction. Normally at this point I'm trying to decide where the blood flow areas are going to be, where some of my reds and purples are going to exist at, but that's really what's tricky when it comes to creatures, is in a sense you're kind of making all of this stuff up. You can see that I'm also trying to reinforce some of the structure that's underneath it with some yellows, but again, I'm really struggling with this look of how this is all going to meld with the base color that's underneath it at this point. It's a little bit of a struggle and everything feels a little bit too hyper exaggerated. When I'm texturing skin, I normally feel pretty confident in this stage as to where I need to be laying down my color, but with this character, I felt like I kind of rushed it, so I spent a little bit more time going back to areas and trying to refine some of those reds, purples, and yellows, and just really making them feel a little bit more cohesive. 
one of the really prominent issues that I was running into was I was really heavily relying on the red and so the skin started to kind of feel a little bit too feverish and I was having issues with the bony areas also feeling a little bit too yellow. They were standing out from the rest of the character. So moving forward, that's what I'm going to try to alleviate is just kind of blending those areas in a little bit more so they feel more natural and not quite as plastered onto the model and standing out from the rest of the character. Now, after spinning my wheels for a couple of cycles, it seems like I'm at a good point to start viewing my character more in its finality. So to do that, I exported out all of my textures and started bringing everything over into Unreal. By getting everything imported into Unreal, this is going to allow me to really start to see and diagnose my problem areas. Right away, if you look at the character, the main thing that you're going to notice that isn't working is how prominent the yellow areas are they're really standing out from the rest of the model. The whites and the reds I do feel like feel okay, but the yellow is just way too prominent for my liking. After making a pass through to kind of dull everything out a little bit, I get to a point where I feel like the textures are okay, so I'm gonna start layering in some blending to kind of knock back the colors a little bit further. I feel like at this point I'm in a place where I'm starting to become more happy with what I have and I'm just going to continue to refine that process and that base that I've established. Next it's going to be time to move on to adding some variation and break up to my surface. This is the area where I do feel like the textures all really kind of start to come together and feel a lot more cohesive and like there's depth and believability to them. This is the point where I was able to kind of move a little bit more away from the hand painted color blends and start adding a little bit of high frequency detailing with the textures so that it starts to feel a little bit more alive and more nuanced and like there's a lot more stuff going on underneath the skin. To do this, I'm just relying on a couple of different veins and plasma tileables. By getting these in place, I really start to like the feeling that there's something going on underneath the skin. This just really starts to make it feel like it's alive and gives me a lot more confidence and motivation to continue down this, this path. So as I mentioned with this process of texturing, I really am experimenting and playing with a lot of different things. Ultimately, this leads me to running across a lot of different happy accidents, which is really nice. And by chance, that's actually what happened here with this character when I started throwing a granite material on top of my character. It started to produce this kind of interesting variation to the skin that wasn't present before, but it felt like maybe there was kind of some damage or discoloration to the skin that I really liked and wanted to try and reinforce. If you look here, you can see that it's adding a lot of really interesting variation and kind of big interesting shapes to the texture that I ultimately really liked and ended up keeping and using that to kind of influence my textures down the line. During this stage of the process, I feel like the textures are in a pretty good spot. So this leads me to going down kind of an iterative process of back and forth with my old layers to keep smoothing things out, blending things out, and just really continuing to kind of meld everything together. This hasn't been a very linear process, but because I'm building my own textures and kind of just basing it off of what I like and my own intuition, it kind of leads to a lot of back and forth to get the final result. While doing this process of texturing and refining, I'm also still continuing to jump back into Unreal to start testing out some of the shaders. I really kind of try to push the development of the character with this shader. Like I had mentioned before, I really wanted that kind of translucent feel to the skin. So that's kind of what I was trying to experiment with and capture in my shader. When inside of Unreal, I really wanted to try and push how far I could move in that direction of that translucent skin, which I was able to really push it pretty far. And that's one of the interesting things here is that even without real intervention from the textures, I liked the direction that I was heading. I felt like it was pretty interesting and it felt kind of unique to the character. So that just gave me more motivation to push down that direction. It felt like it wasn't too stylized and unbelievable. Also, one of the things that you'll notice here when I'm looking at the character is how wet the model feels. That was actually obviously something that I wanted to keep from the original Xenomorphs. 
The reason for that was I knew down the line that I was going to want some really dark lit renders and I really wanted the light to play off the model and have some kind of reflection back so that that wet surface really just was something that I could take advantage of and play with the mood and atmosphere in my renders. Like I had mentioned before, I really started to feel like I was getting in a groove with my textures, and one of the recent things that I figured out was that marble texture. So I wanted to start accentuating that out a little bit more. So I took a pass at kind of pushing it a little bit further with some hand painting. I started to add some of that information to kind of like the crevices and cracks of the body, and I wanted to kind of maybe influence some deterioration of the skin and damage in kind of some of those less exposed areas but are starting to gradate out to more exposed bodies of skin. Now obviously at this point I really haven't done much focus uh, on the head area and that's because I wanted to do something a little bit different in variation from the actual body mass. I wanted the dome to kind of have its own point of interest. Obviously, in the classic model, it's just kind of a big, black, shiny, smooth surface. But for myself, I wanted to try and add something a little bit more flesh-like, so I did a pass of just some hand painting with procedurals over the top of it. I played with the idea of these vertical lines that kind of stretched across it. I just added and subtracted things ultimately until I got to a place that felt interesting. I kind of wanted something that felt a little bit maybe shell-like if that's a way to describe it. After adding a little bit of paint, I felt like it started to come across as kind of a Rorschach painting with a lot of symmetry, so that's kind of an idea that I started to play into, that this is more of kind of like a unique trademark to just this alien. Everyone is a little bit different, so I kind of like that idea and tried to push that a little bit further. So the next thing that I really wanted to tackle was adding some big irregular patches of skin to the alien. I wanted to capture some kind of big shapes that kind of felt like there was some discoloration going on in the skin. I added a couple of different layers, making some of them reds and purples, and then I just came in and hand painted out the ones that I didn't really feel like were working. Now one of the last things that I wanted to tackle was adding some flaked skin onto the model. Inside of the actual sculpt, I had added a couple of areas that were like pulled back flesh, so I wanted to start to integrate that with an additional layer on top. I also added some additional damage across the model with some of the different irregular shapes that I had just added. One thing that I made an additional attempt here was the idea of adding some gradients to the hands of the character. At the beginning of the process, I kind of experimented with it, and I liked what I had, but ultimately I didn't feel like it was working, so I took another swing here to try and integrate maybe kind of like a dark gradient from the bottom of the hands more up towards the arm. This was going to just allow for kind of the focal point to kind of be drawn in the direction of the head. So to do this, I used a couple of different gradient masks and kind of just modified them a little bit until I got something that looked pretty cool. Now the last touch of details that I added on this character were just some really high detailed procedurals over the top to add a little bit of extra sharp detail on top of the skin. This kind of brought everything together and pushed it to the next level. When looking at the skin, you can see all kinds of different layers together between the reds and the purples and the yellows and the blues, which I think really helped kind of push that thin skin feel that I was going after. And this is what the final results of the texture look like. This piece was probably one of the more challenging pieces that I've tackled in a while. There was a lot of back and forth and iterating because I wasn't quite happy with the results that I was getting. A large part of that was because of the fact that I kind of was just having to solve and figure it out myself. I didn't have anything laid out in front of me to sort of aim for. So I kind of had to just tackle it and find results that I was happy with. But I think ultimately, that's what made this piece so fun. It was an opportunity for me to just kind of challenge myself and grow and experiment and try and find things that I liked and kind of decode the textures and make it into something interesting. The next phase of the process that we're going to take a look at is actually going to be a quick one, and that's going to be how I built the subsurface scattering for this character. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to subscribe and follow, and you can see more updates and videos of the process of this character, as well as some of the other things that I'm working on. So thanks guys for checking this out. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.